Welcome back guys to Red Wolf Round Table. Year four for Cooper Milner and myself here on the show. It's the last ride for us, but you know, Cooper, we got a little space in between us we today. We do, we do have a little space. And Tristan, why don't you tell people why we're kind of separated apart? We still like each other, surprisingly. Yeah, but, we'll, we'll handle that later. Yeah. But as many of you guys know, there's a football game this Saturday, first game of the season in Centennial Bank Stadium. The Arkansas State Red Wolves are taking on the Central Arkansas Bears. We have a special guest that told us via the, the uh, new Outlook mailing system that the university yes. switched us to that he had a score prediction that he kind of wanted to tell us. So if our special guest wants to make his way to the center of our camera, we can go ahead and get us underway. Ladies and gentlemen, Hal, for the first time ever, has joined Red Bull Frown Table. It's only taken us four years to yes. get him on. But Hal, I understand you've been talking to us a little bit about this game and how much it means to you to see Arkansas State win. So what's maybe a score prediction you got for this game? Got to collect his thoughts here. Yes. Okay. Gotta, you know, divide the one. A state and four. Now, that's typically a basketball terminology, but from my understanding, it means a state and four quarters. So, yes. no overtime, no funny business. A state's going to win it outright in four. I like it. I like the prediction. Win all four quarters. Beautiful. Well, Hal, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hopefully, this will be a regular occurrence. Wolves up, baby. We'll see you on the sideline. There we go. Thank you so Thank much. You. Did you get your marker in the whiteboard? There we go. He's got, a, he's got a busy plate, so he could only come on for just a little bit. But, Cooper, you know, this Saturday is the first game in Centennial Bank Stadium. It's going to be a lot of fans in the stadium, a lot of fans from Conway, Arkansas, on the field. But, Cooper, just kind of looking at it from the outsider point of view before we get too much into it, how do you feel about the game? Well, it's kind of a big rivalry in my family because my mom, my dad, my brother and sister, they all went to UCA and Conway. I'm the, you know, I guess the outcast. I decided I'd say I'm taking my talents to Jonesboro, Arkansas. And so I'm excited for this game, you know, get a little family rivalry going on, a little trash talk. So it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be fun. And hopefully A-State can come out on top. Well, you know, it's week one, so I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of, you know, miscommunications, a little, you know, getting the jitters out early. But it's going to be a good game. A lot is kind of on the cusp for both of these teams, which we'll get into a little bit later. But, you know, this game is really going to be the one impacted by the offensive line. You know, there's a bunch of guys that we're going to get into later about who's going to have the upfront protection most and what quarterback is going to have the more protection and guards to get it to the receivers. You see they've had a couple of transfers out. Arkansas State, you know, they lost their number one guy, Jeff Foreman, to the NFL draft, who got picked up by the Oakland Raiders and undrafted Las free Vegas. agency. Yeah. Oh, Las Vegas. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm welcome. still so old school here. But, no, it's going to be a fun, fun show. We're going to talk all about, all about the game, all about the season. And we got another special guest that will come on the yes, show a little bit do. later. But we before do. we get too carried away, we're going to go to break. When we come back, we'll have our second special guest of the show right here in between Cooper and I. Stick around. Students should watch ASU TV just to see the creativity that a college student can get. The creativity that some of these students have is, is truly amazing. Getting that experience can really just take you further and I feel like our program does that for a lot of students. I think one of the things I learned at Arkansas State was life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you respond to it, and that's just something that I live by. A-State is home, and they're going to treat you like you're a part of the family. ASU TV, covering all your favorite sports. From Red Wolf Roundtable to West Side Football and more, ASU TV has you covered. Tune in now to ASU TV for news and coverage on these sports and more.
looking at that and it threw me off. Welcome back to Red Wolf Roundtable. Joining us now is another mini. Thank you, Reverend. Welcome back to Red Wolf Roundtable here on ASU TV. Joining us now is someone that's near and dear to our hearts who made an appearance last year talking about a couple things. Joining us now is Mr. Brad Bobo. Mr. Bobo, how are you doing today? Good. Hey, it's not every day you have a show with two guests and how has the second biggest head of the two. So that's, that's a, quite, really? a, quite a deal you guys have pulled <laughs> off. Yeah. Well, you know, we brought you on today just talking a little bit about fan engagement this year, what you guys are cooking up when it comes to the marketing side of things to really get students and fans back in Centennial Bank Stadium. Yeah, um, so we'll, we'll talk students specifically uh, for a little bit. Um, you know, number one, I really think it's an exciting time across the university. Uh, you know, housing is, was full, I think, for the first time since 2016. Uh, a big freshman class. So there's a lot of, you know, right off the bat, you've already got a, sort of a bigger pond to fish in. Uh, you know, what I hear from people I'm hearing on campus, there's a lot of buzz this week about the football game. Hopefully a lot of students making decisions to stay on campus this week, stay on campus next week, then go home. Get your parents to come here next weekend for family weekend. Then you got like three straight weekends. You can go home every weekend if you want. Right. I don't care. Uh, but for students, uh, I'm excited uh, about what it could look like Saturday. Um, and, and I would say the biggest change, if there is one, really, um, and it's not a change as much as it's just a continuation of kind of the evolution, if you will, of the, the patio at the Pines, uh, the deck that now resides in the student section at the vault. Right. And, you know, I've seen that just, you know, setting up for the football game and everything. So what is there a new idea with it or is there different things that you guys have looked at doing with yeah. it? So a couple different things. Um, and listen, it, it, when I say it, it's not it was not the student's fault. Like last year, that thing just sort of showed up. Right. And right. I think we probably came over here and talked about, hey, it's yours. Use it. But it wasn't a lot of it was just kind of we'll put this thing here and see if they figure it out. It's still a case this year. We have dressed it up. New signage on the front of that looks sweet. I think it'll look even better under the stadium lights Saturday night. But you know that thing will hold a lot of people. Uh, and if you haven't been there uh, as a student, for sure, I'd suggest just kind of go and check it out sometime. But kind of how it's going to go is um, you got two levels. The bottom level is pretty much open seating. Not pretty much. It is just open. Now, that bottom level is also going to have DJ, uh, our DJ uh, is going to be on the bottom level. For these first two games, Saturday night and next Saturday night, also on that bottom level, uh, the eSports team is going to be there, and they're going to have NCAA College Football 25 going. Uh, they're actually going to have a thing going where you, you can the students come up and you play a series as a state against a member of the eSports team with a okay. series on offense, a series on defense. Uh, and so, like, you can literally play the game while you're at the game. The second floor, one of the things we're doing that is different this year is giving student organizations uh, the opportunity to sort of reserve that space uh, and, and kind of have a, a space designated for themselves on that top floor. And I know there are some of the Greek organizations that are going to be there Saturday night. Uh, and so we look forward to, I look forward to seeing what that thing looks like for. We're gonna, so by the way, uh, some of our teams are going to be on the, the bottom floor as well. I think men's basketball is going to be hanging out over there. I think baseball is going to be hanging out over there Saturday night. So uh, for students, you can go out there and, and kind of watch the game with some of our athletes too. There'll be times we send Brandon Baxter up there for live shots and different in-game pr promotions and contests. So. Um, I, look, there are still there are students, right? That we absolutely, if we're just being honest, there are students we don't want on that deck. Mm -hmm. There are students that want to be on that wall, 
and there's, the, it's, you know, you guys aren't old enough to know a few good men, but like we want them on that wall. We need them on that wall because that's what they do. They get down there and they make noise. But for students who may just uh, want a little different perspective, it's a really cool spot to stand and watch the game. And really, it's called Patio at the Pines for a reason. It's, you know, take the 15 steps mm -hmm. it would take just about to get from the Pines across the concourse onto that deck and come hang out and watch the game. And I know we have a blackout going for the crowd for week one. Do we have anything other going on, any other special events so, going on throughout the day? Well, I mean, there'll be, I mean, throughout the day, I mean, all kinds of stuff. Um, but when you see, like, and I think week by week, you'll see early in the week, football social media will put out where black, mm -hmm. like they did this week. And then really it's an indicator. What they're pretty much t telling you is this color jersey we're going to be in. Yeah. Uh, and so they've, and, and they've even today on football social media, they put out the whole, the uniform reveal. It's the all black. Spoiler alert, you know, next week is paint the stadium red. Yeah. Right. Figure it out. Uh, <laughs> the new red jerseys. So that's next week. So yeah, black. Now I will say this again, if, if we're talking to students, um, order the packs coming up Thursday night. And one of the things that you'll see there, there is that there is, you know, a set stu a student section theme for every game. I'm all for, hey, so I'm, we're not trumping that, like, right? It, we're telling our fans to wear black, that's great. But that student section, I mean, the more into those themes the students get, the better. I don't want them to feel like they're tied into just wearing the color. We're telling them if the student section theme is something different. Like you really and truly, that student section can be its own little section of the world. Mm -hmm. And and this is how we all feel about it, is that, and I don't care if we're talking football, basketball, whatever. You can go to places across the country that you might be able to have a good atmosphere and not have a good student section. It's possible. Mm -hmm. You can have a good atmosphere even if your student section's good, but I don't think it's possible to have a bad atmosphere if your student section's good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It starts, we really starts there, and, and I would lump in because the band's right beside them, they're students too. So that, those two sections, we feel like the juice starts there and will spread around the rest of the place. Yeah. Right. So, and this is kind of just a, you know, question off the cusp here, but back in, you know, seasons prior, mm -hmm. the Greek organizations right. were able to bring their letters and put them in that yard area right beside the student section. Is there any chance that comes back this year? Is there still open area there? Did I feed you that question? Did I tell you to ask me that? You did not. But because I honestly wish I would have. I wanted you to ask <laughs> me that because... I've made it abundantly clear. In fact, we went uh, in last Friday afternoon into the tri council meeting with every Greek organization on this campus and told them, make no bones about it. We want you to bring those letters into the stadium. Uh, the, just the spot you mentioned, the hill over there at the end. Uh, and again, I, you could even see, and I'm all on board for Saturday night. If you see some of those organizations that are on the deck, they might have their letters on the deck. Okay, another reason maybe to sign up and get your get a game locked in for your group. But if you're watching this, and I hope you're hearing me, <laughs> because I threw my mic in the floor getting so excited about making sure you know, we welcome, invite, in fact, want those letters in the vault. Well, Mr. Bobo, again, thank you so much for coming back on the show to yes, talk thank you. about fan engagement, yeah. about getting students back in the stadium. But real quick before we let you go, to you being the historic figure in Arkansas State Athletics that you are, <laughs> <laughs> giving, it, giving in the good old-fashioned ribbon here, but what would it mean to Brad Bobo, who's talked about Arkansas State Athletics for many, many years, what would it mean to you to have a packed-out bowl this season? Well, I mean, it would mean job security. And that's the most important thing. Now, beyond that, I, 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 I told a group of my colleagues in a, in a staff meeting today, um, and so I'll put it here too, I, and, I, and maybe even out publicly in social media between now and then, but I know what the number is that was the average home attendance throughout the entire decade of the 2010s. From 2010 to 2019, 
for those that whole 10 year period, I know what the average announced home attendance was. Now, obviously 2020, a whole bunch of stuff changed, but that average for the 2010s, we've not announced that number one time since. Wow. We haven't hit the average one time since. Wow. Now, here's what else I tell you. You know what else we did in the 2010s? We won 76% of our home games. Now there's a little bit of a chicken or the egg type conversation here, but here's what I tell you. One of those things help get to the other, and it doesn't matter kind of which way you go. Sure, you're gonna say, well, more people came because you won 76% of your home games, but I'd, it's just as true to say we won 76% of our home games because more people came. Yeah. Right. So it really is chicken or the egg, and so, um, so I, I hope people take it. You know, I don't want you to come watch the game. I want, you're going to come and see the game, but I don't want your mindset to be I'm going to watch the game. I want your mindset to be I'm going to help Arkansas State win the game. Yeah. Kind of the 12th man like atmosphere. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's exactly. the whole point. That's the magic of playing home. It's not that they really just like wearing a red or a black jersey better than white or they like staying at the Embassy Suites better than wherever they stay on the road. The magic of being at home is being in front of your people and when the chips are down or when the game's on the line, they're going to help you get the winning edge. And that starts, by the way, and I'm running over here. You take but, as much time as you want. <laughs> but to that end, that starts not at 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It starts at 345 uh, with Red Wolf Walk. And so, again, students, I understand you may be in the Pines. And I, here's, I'm not asking you to go from the Pines all the way out to Tailgate City. I'm asking you for 10 or 15 minutes, maybe just walk from the Pines around to the main gate of the stadium because that's still part of Red Wolf Walk too. But that Red Wolf Walk, and I, I hope people understand this, it sets the tone for what kind of game day our players have, good or bad. When Red Wolf Walk is good, then our players get a little extra juice walking in to the stadium. But when Red Wolf Walk is scarce, it has the exact opposite effect. They're sitting here thinking, well, there's nobody out here now. There may not be anybody here when the game kicks off. Mm -hmm. so, whether, so if it's a good note or a bad note, Red Wolf Walk is the note that these players head in for for game day. So uh, it's two hours and 15 minutes before the game. So uh, I'd invite you to just come early uh, for that and, you know, go watch the volleyball team at 2 and then get over there in time for Red Wolf Walk. Well, Mr. Robo, again, thank you for coming on. I'm sure, right. sure you'll be back. I'm yeah. sure there's going to be oh, yeah. more stuff we can talk about. But, again, thank you for so much for coming on. Saturday, 6 p.m., under the stadium lights, Arkansas State takes on Central Arkansas. We asked Hal this question. We're going to give it to you, too. What's your score prediction for this game? Uh, well, the Red Wolves by as many as we can beat them by. There we go. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take another short break. When we come back, Cooper and I will start to give our analyst on the Arkansas State versus UCA game. Stick around. When you say experience counts, it's experience that counts for a lifetime. Boxes, boxes, I cannot fit in the boxes. Stop it, stop it. Quitting was never an option. Exhausted, exhausted. This passion is never exhausted. And you cannot stop it. Nah, you cannot stop it. Quitting was never an option. Here to deliver the latest news on A-State sports, ranging from football, basketball, baseball, and more. I'm your host, Tristan Harlan, alongside your other host, Cooper Mellor. Red Wolf Roundtable is your local sports source. Tune in to Red Wolf Roundtable to get your fix on sports talk and news. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. 
gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. Welcome back to Red Wolf Roundtable. We're now going to a little bit more into the matchup against UCA this Saturday. Real quick, once again, want to shout out Hal and Brad Bobo coming on today. Great to have them on. And so now, Tristan, we're back in the swing of things. Our senior year, week one against uh, in-state foe, UCA, the Bears. Yeah, and I mean, this is kind of the first season that Arkansas State will start football with an in-state competition next year than playing the team up north that we can't really talk about. Yeah. But, you know, this game has a lot of implementations for both squads, and I know I said that earlier, but this is what I mean when I say that, is that UCA, this team is so talented, this roster is anyway, that they could beat the worst teams in the Sun Belt, a.k.a. shout out ULM. But <laughs> I just think that this game – is going to not necessarily be the trap game for Arkansas State because those happen later in the season, but I think this game is going to open a lot of eyes on the roster of Arkansas State and the roster of UCA. Just going into it, you know, UCA, they do technically lead the series by yes. game, but a lot of that is going back to the 1920s, 1930s, way before Cooper and I were even thought of, even our grandparents were probably thought of. But this game – needs to start out quick, hard, and fast for Arkansas State because UCA, they can come out, punch us in the mouth, and they can score 14 points before we even get a field goal. Yeah, I mean, last time we played UCA at home, they did get up a lead on us. They were winning at halftime 14-6. to six. Then, you know, we come out of the second half, calm down. So expect some sloppy play. It's week one, and I'm just so glad we're playing a team like UCA to start off the year. Not a team where, like Grambling a couple of years ago, where we go out there, beat them 58-3. to three. And also, we're not playing a team like Oklahoma, where we get beat 73 to nothing. We get a team that we should beat, and honestly, we will beat, but it's going to be a good test to get us warmed up. Now that next week's game against Tulsa, that's a different story. But to start off against UCA, it's a really good testament to see how our team's going to be this year. Yeah, Cooper, and you're looking at this from a kind of statistical standpoint, and you're saying, okay, guys, you're talking about this, but what 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 is the stat saying? You're saying it now, but they score more points a game than us. They allowed less points than us. And, I mean, they're kind of almost beating us in every statistical category. I mean, it, here's the thing, okay? I know this looks bad. I know Arkansas State fans are clenching onto their seats right now, clenching onto their teeth because they're getting 2016 vibes when UCA came in and upset the Red Wolves. But here's what I'll say about this game before Cooper gives his, his, his thoughts on it. We – have this quarterback, and I say we, I mean Arkansas State, but Arkansas State has this quarterback by the name of Jalen Rayner. Now, I know everybody's talking quarterback, 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 but here's what a lot of people don't understand when it comes to this game. Arkansas State has one guy on the offensive line named McKeelan Thomas who has the ability to be the best offensive lineman in the Sun Belt. Now, there's going to be more talks later about, about UCA's offensive line, but here's what I'll say about what this passing game needs. This passing game needs confidence. Last season, there was a lot of times where we had, where they had the opportunity to throw it. They threw it, and it was rushed, or Jalen Rayner got pressure off the right side, and there was nothing really good for the Red Wolves. Stony Brook is when Rayner got his kind of confidence. Southern Miss is when he found it. But this game for Rayner has to start well. It cannot start sloppy it cannot start with him going two for ten and throwing maybe not even an interception but just throwing some bad balls but the strength of this game for the Red Wolves offense will be the running game I mean Rainer's got legs you're seeing some now when he scored against Southern Miss and when he ran it in you know that because that was kind of his true to coming out game but the offense has got to start the run game early if Arkansas State wants to beat UCA. Yes, and it's not even Rainer running the ball. It's Jaquez Cross. He had a breakout season last year. We saw it not even on 
not only on the offensive side, but even on the special teams where he had a kickoff return against Texas State, which got us bowl eligible. And Jaquez Cross is going to be a very key piece. You'll see him first, second down, and then when it comes to third down, you'll see a running back that you saw a bunch last year, Zach Wallace, bigger, more power running back, see him in the goal line. So if we can get the RPO going, it's kind of the new offense for the Red Wolves, the read pass option. So it's going to be interesting to see what Butch Jones is going to have for his game plan week one. And speaking of the game plan, we've been talking about all last well, last semester, basically, about the transfer, Malik Hornsby, and he's not even in the starting lineup. Well, starting wide receiver lineup. Yeah, not starting wide receiver lineup, but here's what I'll say. I mean, in Rainer, of course, he threw almost 3,000 yards, almost 20 touchdowns, threw seven interceptions. But a big key to this game when we talk about receivers, it's not going to be when will Malik Hornsby see the field because undoubtedly he's going to see the field at some point. But my biggest question mark, and this will be my biggest question mark all season long, is where does Corey Rucker fit in? Corey Rucker last year was not the number one guy. Jeff Foreman was now on the Las Vegas Raiders. There you go. Thank you, Cooper. But it's going to be a kind of a testament of where can Corey Rucker fit in because last season he didn't get a touchdown until the bowl game. You're seeing some highlights from his kind of breakout year in 2020, 2021, where he absolutely went off and had a bunch of touchdowns, a bunch of receiving yards. Of course, he was getting the ball thrown to him by two different quarterbacks, Lane Hatcher and James Blackman. But Corey Rucker had this thing happen to him at South Carolina when he transferred, called an injury. And now what this means is, and you know, and I'm not saying this to kind of throw him under the bus or anything, but Corey Rucker had this injury, and it kind of takes away your eligibility and your ability and your mental state to really plant your foot and get to the routes and get out when you need it to. Now, of course, Jalen Rayner, he's able to kind of escape the pocket a little bit and kind of extend plays that should have been ended a second or two ago. What this means for Rucker is he has the ability to run his traditional route and still get open through a different kind of cut, turn, or shimmy to where he can catch the ball on the sidelines or get out to where he can actually create more space and get more yardage. Now, with that being said, don't get me wrong. Corey Rucker's game, I'm a fan of. I love Corey Rucker's receiving ability. His ability to catch the ball on third downs, absolutely tremendous. His ability to catch an over-the-shoulder deep ball, absolutely tremendous. But – when it comes to mental ability, that is the number one thing, thing a receiver needs and is the mental ability to catch the football. Corey Rucker, if you're listening, you know you're my dog. you got to tell yourself up here that you can do it and you can go out and do the same thing you did in 21 when you made ULM you know, your son. But to the grand scheme of things, so I don't go on a rant because everybody knows I'm infamous for my rants, Corey Rucker has got to get involved early and he cannot let – last season kind of affect his ability to be a playmaker this season. Yeah, and, you know, we're talking about Corey Rucker. He needs to basically be acting like he's playing ULM every game so he can have that breakout game. But also, I feel like our true wide receiver one coming into this season is Courtney Jackson. I feel like he's been kind of quiet, not really talked about, because like Tristan was saying, we had Jeff Foreman last year great wide receiver. The year before that, everyone's, okay, Corey Rucker, he's this freshman, he's going to be this new guy that he's going to take over, gets injured, Jeff Foreman steps up. And Courtney Jackson, he's been that receiver, he's been sneaky. So I'm really excited to see how they can really implement him into the offense because he is, no offense to Corey, but a lot bigger than him, a lot taller than Corey. So if we can get Courtney Jackson going, that's when you can really find ways to get Rucker into the offense. Little, you know, just little slant routes for Corey, have Jackson going down on a deep post, a go route, something like that, because Corey, he can go up and get the ball. But I really want to save the deep ball main, mainly for Courtney Jackson and keep the underneath routes for Corey to see what he can do in space. Right, and, and don't get me wrong, you, that's a great point. Courtney Jackson, fantastic athlete, fantastic wideout. But you got to realize something, okay? This is Corey Rucker's team. Yeah. Corey Rucker has had this Red Bulls offense in his pocket since he was here 21 before he went to South Carolina and came back. But 
And here's what I'll say about the whole Courtney Jackson Rucker thing. They're only as they're only as good as their weakest link. So who's going to be that receiver that not weak, but who has to pick up the slack? Is it Courtney picking up for uh, Corey or is it Courtney Corey picking up for Courtney? There's a lot of C's there. Yes. But and this kind of goes back into you know kind of the different differential for Jalen Rayner. Who does he trust more to catch open balls? Who does he trust more to throw into coverage when he has to to make a play? Does he trust Cor- Cordy- Corey Rucker or Courtney Jackson? That is a lot of C's, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to start calling and saying Ruck or Jackson. Okay. But who does he trust more in the deep ball threat, Ruck or Jackson? Who does he trust more when he has to throw it into single or even double coverage because there's not something going? Now, I'm not, trust me, I'm not invalidating what you said, but – from a grand scheme of things and what I think this offense needs to do, again, I'm not Keith Heckendorf, but I just think that Corey Rucker is going to be the more reliable option because he's seen this offense. He has seen Keith Heckendorf's kind of playbook. Yes, he was with Blake Anderson before Blake Anderson left and then Butch Jones came and took over that he didn't like, so he kind of went and explored other opportunities. But just from an offensive standpoint, we've ran the same offense. Yes. It feels like the past 20 years almost. So, Rucker has that playbook in the back of his mind. He does, but something we'll also have to look at at week one. We might have to throw away the entire, I'm not, not entire playbook, but change up the game plan because we're looking at the weather. There is going to be some rain in the area come Saturday. It could be cleared up by night, but look at this. We got weather on Red Bull Frown Table now. I know. We're, we got fancy things now, yes, ladies and gentlemen. You're looking at it. <laughs> Scatter thunderstorms. Hopefully, we don't have any lightning delays, anything like that. Maybe just a little rain. But if it does rain all up to kickoff, that field's going to be slick. It's not natural grass, it's turf. And then you're thinking about it injuries come into play. So, how are we going to be able to play week one in the rain if it does rain? It's going to be interesting because then you're not get holding the ball on well. You're going back to the run game, going back to Jaquez Cross, going back to Zach Wallace, and maybe just running the read option a lot more than throwing the ball. Right, and I think the last time there was a kind of rainy game at Centennial Bank Stadium was two seasons ago when South Al came to town. Mm-hmm. So who's to say that the offense doesn't change their playbook? Who's to say their def- the defense changes their playbook? But – For what I do know is that we're going to, you know, kind of take a breath, kind of recollect ourselves, recollect our thoughts, and when we come back, we're going to kind of shift focus to UCA and how they can come into Jonesboro and upset the Red Bulls just like they did in 2016. Stick around. Students should watch ASU TV just to see the creativity that a college student can get. The creativity that some of these students have is, is truly amazing. Getting that experience can really just take you further, and I feel like our program does that for a lot of students. I think one of the things I learned at Arkansas State was life is 10% of what happens to you, 90% of how you respond to it, and that's just something that I live by. A-State is home, and they're gonna treat you like you're a part of the family. ASU TV, covering all your favorite sports. From Red Wolf Roundtable to Westside Football and more, ASU TV has you covered. Tune in now to ASU TV for news and coverage on these sports and more. Welcome back to Red Bull Roundtable here on ASU TV. Now we're going to go back into talking a little bit more about the matchup against UCA. We're talking about, like Tristan said, what does UCA need to do to come in and upset the Red Bulls like they did in 2016? And it all starts from 
mentally. They're going to come in. This is a big game for them. For Arkansas State, we don't see them as a rival, whereas UCA, this is their time to shine, show them why they are the big dogs in Arkansas. Right, and I think a lot of that, too, goes to back to the offensive line. You know, as a former lineman myself, I know I totally could have played quarterback back in my day. But I feel like the offensive line is going to win or lose the matchup, especially with the rain. Because, I mean, here, here, here's, a, here's a fact for you for all, my, for all my number nerds. The average weight of UCA's line is 316 pounds, and the average weight for Arkansas State is 322 pounds. So Arkansas State has the weight advantage. But here's what Arkansas State does not have. They do not have the protection in the passing game like UCA does, okay? So, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but UCA has this lineman named Jamal Mole. And this guy... Let me tell you, and I don't say this a lot about opposing schools or opposing players, this guy has all the potential to be an NFL guy. And I, and I mean that genuinely. I don't mean that as a sarcastic comment. I mean that genuinely. He has only allowed two snaps, and I think about 720 snaps, two sacks. Okay. That, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of snaps to, you know, give up a sack for. And here's the thing. When UCA snaps the football, their, their quarterback is usually getting – three to four to maybe even five seconds of protection to where he can escape the pocket, extend plays, run it himself, and really do anything. I mean, Mole, he had two penalties last season. But what I'll say is, is that every offensive lineman knows is that you could call holding on every play. I mean, yes. you, re you yes. realistically There's could. always holding. But going back to my point, to only give up two sacks and playing almost 800 snaps of football – that is absolutely mind-blowing. Now, don't get me wrong. I wish we had a guy like Jamal Moore on our offensive line. Not saying McKeelan Thomas is, you know, worse than him or even better, but with this passing game and this running game that Arkansas State wants to have, we need a guy that does that. This is why their seventh-year quarterback is so well in the pocket. This is why he's doing so well. I mean, it, it's, it's elementary, really. I mean, he's thrown almost 3,000 yards, 24 touchdowns, and he went 239 for 376 passes. Yeah. That is crazy. It is crazy. And, and, and that just goes to a test. Back to what I said previously, UCA really could play in the Sun Belt and probably win at least five games. I mean, I know they can beat teams that are in the American Conference right now. Yeah. Like Charlotte, like Rice, like uh, UTEP, uh, UTSA. Yes. I mean, I, look. I don't want to sit here and give the opponent so much credit and say, oh, UCA is going to beat Arkansas State, UCA is going to do this. But when you've got a guy that blocks that well and a quarterback that can throw that amount of yards, and that's not even talking about their running back. Their running back's from Hoxie, played at Hoxie High School, and he ran for over 1,000 yards. Yes. This team, if there's any Arkansas State football players watching, please listen to me when I say this because we haven't even touched the defense yet. This team is going to come in here and smack you in the mouth. If Look, if you keep your hands on your hips, if you suffer pre-snap penalties, if you don't give 110% every snap, you're going to lose the game. This game will be won, in, won or lost in the fourth quarter. When the rain's coming down, when you're tired, when there's mud all over your jersey, that's when you're going to have to dig deep and win this game. That's when you're going to have to find what it is that you have that could realistically win you the ball game. Because, listen, 2016 was however many years ago. This is 2024. No team is safe in college football anymore. We've no. already seen that when Georgia Tech upset Florida State. We've already seen it. We've already seen an upset in week zero. So I'm sure UCA is looking to play spoiler. And if they have that amount of talent, like I said, we haven't even touched the defense because they've got a dog on defense. Mm -hmm. Then – Something's got to, something's got to, you know, click up here for Arkansas State if they want to come out and be one to know after when the dust settles. Yes, but what people also remember about Arkansas State in that 2016 season was, a state we lost to UCA. We went 0 and 4 in non-conference. We started the year 0 and 4. All hope was lost. We ended up winning eight straight games and won our conference. So if we do lose to UCA, which I, there, I don't think we will, I really don't see us losing to UCA. Last time we lost to UCA, we ended up winning the Sunbelt Conference. So, you know, maybe that's something they need week one, a little punch in the mouth, get them straight, get them ready to play 
Tulsa that next week. But I, UCA, I'm not trying to say they're not a good team. They're a really good team. Like you're saying, they could replace a bunch of the Sun Belt teams, ULM. We're looking I'm, at you. Yes, ULM. Gosh, terrible. I won't even go to that yet. But UCA is a good team. It's a good test. But we're going to win this game. I don't see us losing. It's going to be a slow start for the Red Wolves. I mean, I can't remember since I've been here when we've ever had a fast start in any game. We're going to have that slow start. But we're going to come out there. We're going to get hit in the mouth, but they're going to get woken up and realize, all right, this is the year we prove everybody wrong, and it starts week one, and I'm not worried about UCA. Right, and I mean, just looking at the defensive side real quick, before we really give a prediction for this game, they've got a guy, David Walker, who's their outside linebacker. Dude's an absolute dog, too. He has got a lot of hit power. He's got a lot of speed. Looking at some of his stats and highlights, I think there was, I think, two seconds from when the ball was snapped to when he was in the backfield causing chaos. I mean, this guy is going to give the offensive line problems. He's going to give Jaquez Cross a lot of problems. He's going to give Rayner a lot of problems if Rayner holds the ball just in that pocket for more than three seconds. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got 33 unassisted tackles, 24 assisted for a total of 57. 18 tackles for a loss, 68 yards. He's averaging about eight and a half sacks, one breakup, three quarterback hurries, and one forced fumble. Now, to my stat nerds, you know what that means, but for those of you that don't really study stats or understand what numbers really mean to a football player, I'll just put it to you simple, simply. This guy is a D-A-W-G, dog, okay? And if we don't get some protection on, on him or keep him out of the pocket, I promise you, and this is going to sound outlandish, but Rainer's going to get sacked at least 10 times. But that's when you bring in our style of offense. We have the RPO that we do a lot of misdirection, a lot of moving around to confuse the linebackers, to really confuse the defensive line. And if Rainer's going to prove himself that he is the quarterback that he thinks he is, the good, really good quarterback that could be racking up a bunch of NIL money one day, He's going to have to be able to really, you know, read the D-line. All right, am I going to hold it here? What's the linebacker doing? If I have a slant coming across the middle, do I pull it away and throw it, or do I pull it away and take it myself? It's going to come down to our, our O-line and quarterback because snap to the quarterback, that's two seconds right there. And you have, I don't know, three seconds to make a decision, really. Once you get the ball, you got to go quick. So if Rainer's going to prove that he's the quarterback that he is, he's going to have to prove it week one. Yeah, I mean, because there's a lot to prove with Rainer. I mean, he took over after poor quarterback play from Shroud and Daly, and then he became, you know, kind of just underground legend for the Arkansas State Red Wolves. Diamond in the yeah, rough. Yeah, diamond in the rough. And, you know, he kind of took over and, you know, went to the Manning Passing Academy. So – there's still a lot to prove there, but let's go ahead and get into our predictions. We do. I know you're talking high about UCA, but you do have the Red Wolves winning. And if you're looking at it, it's kind of like college game day where we have other teams in the Sun Belt. We're not only talking about Arkansas State. Yeah, we need to get a new picture of me because that's, you know, that's when I messed up my curve on the bill and everything else. But looking at these predictions, I do have the Red Wolves, Red Wolves winning, of course. I think it's going to be a lot closer than what people say. But we got other games in here, and it looks like we got the Sun Belt going 0-3 in the, in the rest of those games. Our it, minds think alike. Yes, so Arkansas State, if you're into betting, they're a 10-point favorite. You know, you're looking at my prediction. I have the Red Bulls winning by 20, 44-24. It's going to be a really offensive game, and we're going down at it. I think South Carolina, Georgia Tech, they're going to have their way I did pick Boise State to beat Georgia Southern, but I think Georgia Southern covers the spread. I think it's a lot closer than what people are thinking. Okay, no, I like that. And, you know, Boise State, definitely one of those G5 schools that everybody is kind of high on every year. But, you know, going to, going to that Georgia Tech game, Georgia Tech's got a lot to prove, especially yes. after beating Florida State. But, Cooper, we're going to take a little timeout. We've got one room. No, we, we're out of timeouts. We are out of timeouts, ladies and gentlemen. But we're going to take another timeout. When we come back, we're going to talk about some soccer. We forgot yeah. to talk about soccer, Cooper. Talk about some football. Some football. Stick around, guys.
say experience counts. It's experience that counts for a lifetime. Boxes, boxes, I cannot fit in the boxes. Stop it, stop it. Quitting was never an option. Exhausted, exhausted. This passion is never exhausted. And you cannot stop it. Nah, you cannot stop it. Quitting was never an option. Here to deliver the latest news on A-State sports, ranging from football, basketball, baseball, and more. I'm your host, Tristan Harlan, alongside your other host, Cooper Motor. Red Wolf Roundtable is your local sports source. Tune in to Red Wolf Roundtable to get your fix on sports talk and news. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, Westside Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. Welcome back to Red Wolf Roundtable here on ASU TV. We're now into the final segment of this first episode back, and we're going to talk a little bit about A-State soccer. You know, they've played three games so far, two wins, one draw, but they haven't given up a goal all season, Tristan. Yeah, and, you know, that's part of two – due to the scrappy defense, and, you know, don't go anywhere, Cooper, because we actually got a chance to talk to one of the defenders on the Arkansas State women's soccer roster, Kenzie Robinson. Kenzie, how are you doing? All right, guys, we're sitting here with Kenzie Robinson from the Arkansas State soccer team. And, Kenzie, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So we're going to just go ahead and dive in a little bit to the soccer season. I know it's just getting underway, but really, what do you credit to the success of the team as of late? I think just – the desire that everyone has to win. We're all cohesive this year, and none of us want to have the same season as we did last year, so. You know, speaking of last season, it was kind of a struggle. What have y'all changed throughout the off season to get to where y'all are being more successful, really on both sides of play with the offense and defense? Um, I think it was just how we trained, I guess, because we went through a lot. Like last spring, it was a lot. We wake up at 6 a.m., have practice, go to class, go to work, whatever, and then 3.30, weights, do it all again every day. And then this preseason was probably the hardest preseason I've had in four years. And uh, we did conditioning, we did weights, we did PRPs, so that's like player round practices on our own. And we had intention with those. We didn't like mess around. So we kind of went through the thick of it together, and I think that's what brought us together. Right. Speaking on that, what have you? In what ways have you seen the chemistry from maybe the pitch change from you know last season to off season, and now the start of this season? Um, like I said, we're just more cohesive, and if you have everyone that has the same desire to win and to want to be there, that I feel like is everything. And with soccer being season starting for y'all right at the end of the summer, right at the beginning of the school year. Has there been any struggle playing in 100 degree plus weather or anything like that? Because I know last year a game got called at halftime due to the heat. Has that been a big factor at all for y'all? Um, for honestly, like I literally feel like I'm running through like smoke. It's so <laughs> hot and I'm like dying and my sunscreen's in my eyes. It's so much, but we have this new girl from Alaska. Wow. So she's really struggling with the heat. And I mean, I would too, like I'm struggling. And I'm from Kansas City. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's definitely been really hard for sure. But. Right, so of course, for those of you that may not know, Kenzie is one of the defenders on the roster. And I gotta ask, what, how did you become such a scrappy defender, you know, down there late in the game, trying to get the ball away? Like, what do you credit to that? Um, multiple reasons. The first one being, like, I've been playing for so long, and that's such a blessing. Like, God has given me this opportunity, so I'm going to take full advantage of it. 
too. I just want to play for my team. Like, I'm not playing for myself. I'm not playing for my coaches. I'm playing for them because they have my back, so I'm going to have theirs. And then uh, last one, I don't know. I kind of, it's my last year, so I'm playing with a little bit of like a chip on my shoulder. And I want to go out with a bang. I want to do it right. So yeah, that one's for me. And with last year before this upcoming season, y'all had a scrimmage against Harding at Centennial Bank Stadium. Uh, would y'all like to see y'all playing at Centennial Bank where y'all could maybe have a night game due to the lighting issue at y'all's stadium? Or how is that compared to playing on natural grass? You want my honest opinion? Yes. So fun. <laughs> I loved it. The like crowd was there. The energy was awesome. And I don't know, like as a team, we just felt so much energy within the stadium because we had fans. We actually had fans. That's crazy. And I don't know, just so fun. I don't know how else to explain it. Right. And I guess the last one for me, Kenzie, is, you know, what, what's the feeling like to be the first athletic team to really start the next year of college athletics on Arkansas State's campus? Um, I honestly like it just because, like, we get to set the tone for the rest of the year. And I'm super busy, especially with classes starting and everything. But I don't know. I just feel very productive. And it makes me feel good about myself. And then when spring rolls around, I feel like I have more time and I can just relax. Right. Well, Kenzie, again, thank you for joining us on Red Wolf Roundtable today. And, guys, remember, if you want to come see Kenzie Robinson play on the pitch and the rest of the Arkansas State soccer team, make sure to come out to the Arkansas State soccer complex to watch the scrappiest defender in the Sun Belt and the best team in the Sun Belt, the Arkansas State Red Bulls. <laughs> Once again, Kenzie, thank you so much for coming on the show. And, guys, don't forget to support that great team coming up at the soccer complex. Game actually got moved back to 5 p.m., um, but, you know, Team's looking really good this early in the they season. They are. They're looking real good, even with all the stuff that happened to them this past off season. Won't really get into that, but they're looking red hot and ready to go. Yeah, of course, you know, we'll go ahead and mention it. It's, it's worth mentioning, but we'll have to talk about that another day. But, guys, again, this has been episode one of our senior year of Red Wolf Roundtable. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you guys next week. Wolves up, baby.